Optimizing a page for a keyword is still important in this AI era. Even though some people might be searching a little differently today, search engines still need to understand the main keyword topic of your page to properly show them to others. This also helps your website visitors understand your content better. Now, to help you understand how to optimize a page for a keyword, we wanted to share one training lesson from our new AI-powered SEO course that's currently available on rapidlevelup.com. Enjoy. Welcome to our next training. So today I'm gonna show you how to create a page that's optimized for search. Now, as we are planning out our content, we need to keep in mind two very important things. Those two things are search intent and of course the body of our content. So before we create our content, we need to make sure that our page satisfies the searcher intent. One way to do that and figure out search intent is to look at the type, the format, and the angle of our competitors to get clues about the search intent. Our content must be in line with the same search intent as our competitors. The next thing we should focus on is the actual content itself. It should be written with our target audience in mind, and we should focus on making sure the content is easy to digest and readable for a wide audience. Okay, so we need to learn about what type of content and search intent by looking at our competitors. So let's get started. We will be using Keywords Everywhere and SEO Minion in this training lesson. Okay, so let's just say we want to create a piece of content on the best treadmill running shoes. The first thing we want to do is analyze the top ranking pages to get a sense of the searcher intent. I like to take note of the types of content that is ranking and also take a look at the page titles the URLs, and the page descriptions. So we can see what looks like a blog ranking at the top here. It's titled the seven best treadmill running shoes in 2024. Then we see a Reddit article and a couple of more blogs. And as we continue to scroll down, we can see a list of stores that are selling treadmill running shoes and some product listings as well. Sometimes it's hard to see a nice overview of everything, so what I like to do is click on Detailed Breakdown to view all of my competitors in this nice table format. So we can see the full URLs of the top ranking pages, the full titles and descriptions. This table also has some backlink metrics as well. And keep in mind, we will be going over backlinks in a future module. But today I wanna to focus on two specific columns, the off-page difficulty and the on-page difficulty. The off-page difficulty measures the backlink performance of these ranking pages, and the on-page difficulty scores how well these pages are optimized for our query of best treadmill running shoes. Keywords Everywhere takes a look at whether or not the query is exact match in the title, URL, and the description, and broad match in the title, URL, and description, and also the SERP highlights. So my goal when analyzing this table is to pick three competitors that I can more deeply analyze, read the articles to gather the search intent, and also analyze the actual content itself to get a grasp of what is being talked about, and understand the structure and the outline of the content. So I like to note take the types of pages that are ranking, and also try to focus on the ranking pages that have a lower off-page difficulty and a higher on-page difficulty. So the first page stands out to me by runrepeat.com. The title is seven best treadmill running shoes in 2024. And this is the description. The off page difficulty is a little bit on the lower end compared to the rest of the pages. And the on page difficulty is on the higher end. So I'm gonna open this one, then go back to my table and try to find a couple more competitors that we can analyze. So Reddit is a forum, so I'm not going to choose that one. Now this one from runnersworld.com, this one could be a good one, but I am looking at the off-page difficulty and it is on the higher end and the on-page difficulty is rather low, so I'm gonna skip that one. And soulreview.com, best running shoes for treadmill. I do like the metrics for this one, so I'm gonna open this one as well. And let's pick the third and final competitor that we will analyze. 
This one seems to be a news article, so I'm going to skip that one. And GarageGymReviews.com, this one has a good title with good metrics, so I'm going to open that one as well. And I'm going to skip Adidas.com because that is a manufacturer of running shoes. And this one seems to be a forum. And the last one is by NewYorkMagazine.com, so I'm going to skip that one as well. So what we want to do is analyze our three top ranking competitors and see what's common amongst the three and note the structure and the outline. So let's take a look at GarageGymReviews.com. This is clearly a, a blog post and it looks like they are listing out a variety of running shoes with some stats for each one and there's also a, a pros and cons section. And this other one by SoulReview.com also is listing out a variety of running shoes with full specifications and pros and cons as well. And one thing I am notating is the fact that when you take a look at the table of contents, it looks like they are organizing the products by different categories like supportive trainer for treadmill runs, Versatile cushioning for treadmill runs, treadmill shoe for mild over pronators, and so forth. So there's different categories, and they are putting the various products under the different categories. Now let me go back to the first one, and it's very similar as well. So shoes for wide feet, best minimalist treadmill running shoes, and so forth. And they are putting the products under each category. Now let's look at our third competitor. So this one is seven best treadmill running shoes in 2024. And taking a look at the contents, there's various categories as well, like best overall, best speed trainer, best lightweight, low drop stability, and so forth. And they are categorizing uh, the shoes as well, including showcasing the pros and cons. Okay, so what I can gather from these three competitors is that all of them are uh, blog posts, they are listicles, and what I am noticing is they are categorizing the various running shoes, and they are focused on freshness of content as well, like this one, seven best treadmill running shoes in 2024. They also cater to a wide range of runners with different needs and preferences, right? Because you see stability, cushioning, budget, so it's not just for advanced runners or beginner runners, it's basically for a wide audience. So we have an idea of the outlines of these articles, but I wanna go a little bit deeper and make sure I have a good grasp of all the headings that are being used, okay? So I'm gonna use SEO Minion and click on Analyze on page SEO, then take a look at the headings table. So I'm gonna click on No Sorting and click on Show All Headings. So these are all of the headings starting from top of the page to the very bottom. So we can see our H1 is best treadmill running shoes tested for 2024. This one stands out. So best treadmill running shoes in 2024. And that is right here. So they immediately list out all of the best treadmill running shoes and they organize it by category. And then this is the other category as well. And then also the pros and cons. This is the next one with the product, product highlights, pros and cons, and the same pattern seems to be repeating. Now let's go to this next one and let's analyze the on-page SEO. Let's view all headings. Okay, so what's interesting about this one is that the H2s are the products themselves and the H3s are the pros and cons. And further down the page, it looks like they are talking about the various categories, like most comfortable Nike running shoes, best running shoes for wide feet, and so forth. Now let's take a look at the third one, and it looks like they are organizing everything by categories as what we clearly noticed. And there's pros and cons that are wrapped with an H3 tag. And this is very valuable, right, to see everything at a high level. So what we can gather for our page when we write it is that we need to put products under uh, various categories. So what we can gather and really confirm in terms of what type of content and the search intent when we write our article is that we should put products under uh, various categories, as we mentioned, and also cater to a wide range of runners with different needs and preferences, like what we confirmed by using the SEO Minion um, browser add-on. Now that we have all of this information, we can put it in our Google Doc. 
Now this template will be available to you as well, so feel free to download it. Okay, so for the type of content that we should write, it's obviously a blog post. And the format of the blog post should be a listicle. And the angle of the content, I would say, is freshness. They do mention 2024 and they're kind of showing more of the latest brands and models. And our target audience is a wide range of runners with different needs and preferences. And some additional notes I want to add here is we should put products under categories. And let's go up to the URL. So we need to fill the URL part out. And let's take a look at the URLs. So best treadmill running shoes. Let's see here. Best running shoes for treadmill use. And the last one is best treadmill running shoes. So we should be using best treadmill running shoes for our URL slug. That seems to be the more obvious one, right? We want to rank for this keyword. So that keyword should be in the URL slug. Okay, now we need to go to ChatGPT to create the title and the description. Keywords Everywhere has tons of prompt templates that we will be using. So the first one is under SEO, on-page optimization, and meta title and description generator. So let's put our target keyword here, best treadmill running shoes, and let's execute the template. Okay, so ChatGPT generated the title and description for our keyword. So ultimate guide to the best treadmill running shoes for peak performance. Need the best treadmill running shoes? Discover top rated options for comfort and performance. Upgrade your indoor runs with our expert picks today. I'm gonna have ChatGPT generate 10 more. Okay, and many of these are really good. This one stands out. The ultimate list of best treadmill running shoes for 2024. Presenting the ultimate list of the best treadmill running shoes for 2024. Find the perfect pair to match your running style and needs. Now, I like this because it does add freshness, right? They add the year. And I also like the meta description, this second sentence, where it says match your running style and needs. So it seems to be speaking to a broader audience, which is what we noticed from looking at our three competitors. So I'm going to copy this title and put it there and also copy this meta description and put it there. Okay, so now that we have the search intent down and we know the type of content to create, we can have ChatGPT generate our outline. So we are going to click on templates and for category, we are going to click on copywriting, then blog writing, and we're going to click on generate blog post outline. Now I'm going to copy our title and put it there. And for the total headings, I think that's pretty accurate. It's about 20. It might be higher, but let's keep it there for now. Then click on execute template. Okay, so we have our draft outline right here. And at a quick glance, it does look pretty good, but it needs to be updated. So I'm first going to um, copy this and put it in our Google Doc. Then we need to make some tweaks here. And what I wanna do is analyze these outlines and make sure that the best content is kind of filtered through in our outline as well. So for this section, in-depth reviews of each top pick, I do want to add our recommended top shoes right here. Okay, so I added and tweaked some of the headings, added my recommended shoes, and many of them did get pulled from our top competitors. So we have our outline, and now we need to go back to ChatGPT, then have ChatGPT generate a complete blog post from the outline. So I'm gonna put my finalized outline right here, then execute it. Okay, so we have an entire rough draft of our article. So now what we need to do is go through and make our edits. I like to use the Hemingway app to finish off the rough draft that ChatGPT creates. So what I'm gonna do is copy all of the content that ChatGPT creates, then go to Hemingway app and paste it right here. So now what I could do is go through here and make my edits to this rough draft. And what I like to do is make sure that the grade level for readability is six or lower and to make sure the paragraphs are short and the sentences are short as well. I also like to take a look at the metrics right here as well to help guide me. So it says 31 of 125 sentences are very hard to read. So what I could then do is massage these very hard to read sentences and make them more simpler for my audience. 
And when it comes to word count, I try not to aim for a specific word count. The goal here is to make sure that my content is speaking to my target audience and it meets the searcher's intent. After I finalize the content, I also like to add internal links as well. And we will be using a ChatGPT prompt template. So it is under SEO, link building, and add link to article, paste content. So I'm gonna paste my content right here and we need to add our target URL. So I'm just going to put an example target URL here of an internal page that I want to link to, then click on execute template. Okay, so this is the rewritten paragraph with a contextual link and the anchor text of the best treadmill running shoes. So what I could then do is copy this new text and paste it to the original paragraph. So after we write our content, add our internal links, we then need to optimize our images. So when it comes to optimizing our images, we need to make sure the file names of our images are descriptive, and it also has a descriptive alt text. And we of course want to compress images to make them smaller. And when it comes to compressing images, I like to use shortpixel.com so you can upload your image and it'll automatically compress it for you to make sure that it loads very quickly and improves your page speed. Now, when it comes to generating alt text, I do like to use ChatGPT. So I'm gonna upload my image and use this prompt and I'm gonna include this prompt in this lesson as well, then execute it. Okay, so ChatGPT generated our alt text for our image. So generating a very accurate alt text is important because it provides context and meaning for our images. And it also helps people who are visually impaired understand what the image is. And it also helps Google understand what the image is as well. So I always like to include a very descriptive and accurate alt text for all of my images. Okay, so this is how to optimize a page for a keyword Take some time to complete the actions below and I will see you in the next one. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed this lesson from our AI powered SEO course. Now, if you want full access to the course, don't forget to go to rapidlevelup.com. Thank you and we will see you in the next one.